Welcome back to Taja's Cabin. This is part seven. I am Nekrasen. Now, if you've been following the series, you'll remember that in part six, where we left off, I talked about how I made some mistakes with some containers. It's as difficult it is as it is for me to admit, I did make some mistakes with containers and that the only real solution to that was to start a, a new mod, then kind of do a copy and paste of things from the old mod into the new one. And I did try doing that, but the creation kit kind of like, uh, let's just say grabbed its chest and seized up. Um, I couldn't copy and paste everything all at once. Just did not like that. I wasn't surprised when that happened. So I've been having to bring parts over in smaller groups. Not a problem though. I can either left click and drag to grab a group of items or I can hold control and left click on individual items to add to a group and then right click copy, right click paste. No problem. It's getting there. By the way, I do have to apologize for the delay between part six and part seven. There's been a lot going on. There was a lot of mod testing leading up to the start of the new Let's Play, the start of the new Let's Play. I've been doing a little Civ Five, but even more importantly, there's been some real life things that have been going on. So it's taken me a while to get back to it. So anyway, uh, as you can see, we do not have walls yet. And the reason I don't right now is to copy and paste them, I have to have both mods open in the creation kit. Which means if I want to copy walls and paste them, I'm going to be pasting walls where walls are already visible. So it's going to be kind of difficult to know if did I did I take the, that that group of parts and put them in the right place. That's going to be a little difficult. Um, so I may end up having to rebuild the walls on the exterior. Again, make mistakes. There's a price to pay, but. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, you can see that I have doors in place and windows. I got the positions of those and put new ones in. So these are already pre-positioned. Now, before we get into taking a look at what's been done up to this point, I wanted to talk a little bit about Ruby's Cabin. That's the one I did before this. I have a video up on that Ruby's Cabin House Tour if you haven't seen it and that was not the first log cabin there was actually one before that and that one I built part of the interior and I abandoned that one because it was just bigger than it needed to be and it was taking a really long time to build the walls in that one it was just it was just a little too big for a log cabin uh, and when you're building it one log at a time in, in, in other words but the one thing I liked about the design on that one is that I had, there was going to be like a, a trail or like a driveway going down to the left side and down the hill to where you're at the side of the basement. And there was going to be two big open bay doors, like a two car garage or a two carriage garage, if you want to put it in Elder Scrolls terms. But that basement was going to be open to the outside world. You could just walk in there. All your crafting stations are there. All your, all your containers, all your storage, everything's right there. You just walk right in it. No low door. Do what you got to do. Walk out. And I really like that concept, even though that particular house was kind of big. So what ended up happening was uh, I redesigned it. I made it smaller. But I kept that concept of that open basement was and I applied that into Ruby's cabin. Now Ruby's cabin, I ended up going further with that and made the whole house open world, which I already talked about, you know, the FPS problem with that. But I still liked that concept of that open, open world basement. And I'm getting ready to start transferring parts from Taj's cabin to the new mod. And I stopped and I thought, is there any way, any way possible I can incorporate that into essentially what's 
Taj's cabin because we're basically going to take everything from the old mod and put it in the new mod. And I got looking at that and I got pencil and paper and started scribbling diagrams, which again, my handwriting is horrible. It looks like uh, it was something that was drawn by a six-year-old, which is probably an insult to six-year-olds, but we'll move past that. And uh, I thought, well, if I do that, then how am I going to do this? And how am I going to put this door? I got this stuff in the way. I got to move this to here. I got to move that to there. But I think I figured something out. And I think I've been able to implement it. And we're going to go take a look at it and see uh, what all I've done here. And here we go. We had the two big bay doors just like uh, in the original, the original log cabin. You can see our custom smelter is still here, and it is uh, outside now, because it was right here where this doorway was, so it had to move. And in order to make this whole thing work, I did have to make two sacrifices. Two things had to go. Uh, but we'll get inside and take a look at this. You will notice, if you've been following the series, that everything in here looks pretty much the same. This whole, this whole area looks exactly the same, and I don't think there was anything changed over here. We still have our weapons, or this is the armor container. I don't have it linked, uh, connected yet. And, you know, there's a shelf with the helmets and stuff on it. That's all the same. The forge is still here. That's all the same. But you can see this area looks a little bit different. In order to have this big doorway here, well, first of all, the smelter had to move somewhere. So I just thought, you know, I'll just put that outside. That's the one thing I don't have a problem putting outside. But I still had the weapons container and the grindstone. And I thought the only way to make this work is to put them up against this wall. But there was that shelf here that had uh, all those ores and ingots and leather and stuff on it that had to go that was sacrifice number one there just there was no place to put these except maybe over in that side which didn't make sense because this is where you're doing all your all your smithing work so the armor and weapon storage should be here so that one had to go I did put a shelf up here uh, I'm going to put the three shrines on here that are the same on that that one shelf by the front door if you remember that it was Giuliano's um I, I, I don't remember but it's health stamina and magic is what they provided I'm going to put those on here for the same reasons that I have those on that shelf by the front door uh inside so if you are doing work in here and you're getting ready to head out you don't have to go upstairs to find that you can just grab it right here convenience again and I added this floor sconce here the same as what's over on that side and uh, the warrior stone was here and I moved that over here so I like this arrangement this this looks pretty good and again this is not hooked up yet it's not a big deal grindstone anvil all this is pretty much the same so we come over to here and you can see this area looks a little different. I still need to add another light source in here. It gets pretty dark over in this corner. But we uh, I've extended this wall and you can see obviously the staff enchanter has been moved because it used to be over there and now it's over here. I extended this wall a little bit to put a door here. And this is actually a low door now. This is going to take us inside the house. But it kind of interfered with this door to the spare room. I had to move that one a little bit. And so that was partially blocked by the staff enchanter. So I thought, well, I'll just move the staff enchanter over here. And that brought about sacrifice number two, the broom closet. So that was a sacrifice I was willing to make because it's, it's just a broom closet. It's like I said before, a broom closet, is, you're not going to use it. It's just for looking at. It's just for looks. And I thought, well, I'm not going to miss it, you know. So out goes the broom closet. This stuff moves over here, moved over here. Well, I'm not Englishing very well today, but uh, we'll, we'll fight through that. And I put a little bench right here. I might put a shelf up here with some stuff on it. Who knows? Um, 
so that was the big change in this area but as you can see everything over here looks pretty much exactly the same there's our thief stone we got the two shelves in the middle with all the miscellaneous clutter on them we got the big dais right here this is the enchanting area and again it all looks it's almost exactly the same and it should be because I literally was just grabbing items doing a control C and coming in over here and control V copy and paste maneuver them into position so it should look exactly the same now the armory this was open and you could walk straight into the armory and now there's a door this is going to be a low door the armory is going to be in a separate cell its own interior cell and I don't really like having a lot of low doors, but in this case, it kind of made sense because you have to lower the ground in order to make room for it. And you have to push the ground back far enough that it doesn't come in through the walls. And in doing that, it would have left a huge ditch on that side of the house across there, which is where the alchemy garden is going to go. So the best solution was just to make this an interior cell. But it does have one extra benefit. Uh, I can put in all the lighting I want in there and not have to worry about light sources bleeding over into this area, into this area, or up into the dining room, or up into the kitchen, because it's, 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 it is its own interior cell. So, aside from that, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the shelf having to go away and the broom closet, this is, you know, and moving the Staff Enchanter over here, it's pretty much exactly the same setup. And now I've got these two big, big bay doors. We've got a wood chopping block here and a wood pile there. Don't really need the wood pile for storage anymore, but it's mostly just there for looks. There will be a deck across here uh, by the, when I'm done. And uh, so we have portcullis. This is going to be inside the walls, so you won't see it when it goes up. Right now, it's you can see how it's uh, it's moving up in front of the windows, so I'm going to have to push that back a little bit. There's going to be a lot of little adjustments that will still need to be made. But it's mostly the same. And I didn't want to make any wholesale changes, so I, I'm pretty happy with how it looks right now. Here's the spare room. I still need to do some work with that. Ah, oh, come on, man. That stupid thing. Really? It's going to leave me stuck here? Come on. Well, how am I supposed to do a video with that? i got to figure out a way to get unstuck. Yeah, this, uh, this thing, it looks really good, but I, I can't find any way to make this fit. I mean, I can't even find a door to fit it. And now it's not letting me through here. Hey, look at that. I finally got through. All right, let's not do that again. So, uh, before we go take a look at what's been done with the interior, there is something else we have to talk about, and that's static objects and objects that are made static. And there is a difference. I know it sounds the same, but a static object is like this wall section or this, this big timber beam. These are static objects. They don't move no matter what. You can hit them with magic, you can shout at them, you can run into them, you can set them on fire, whatever. They don't move. They're statics. These bottles that are up on this shelf, these all these ingredients, these are made to be static, but they're not true static objects. And to make them static, you have to bring up the item, you have to add a couple of scripts to it, and then... What, I, what else I've done is I put a collision box around it so that things like magic and shouts won't hit them. Um, we're going to prove how ineffective that is a little bit later. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll... All right, we'll do that in a few minutes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something here that's going to show how that's ineffective. Now, if you remember now, we, we went down the basement... How many times in the, in the last six videos? And none of these things were ever out of place. 
None of the bottles and any ingredients ever moved. They were never out of place, even though they're not true statics. And we did have that little problem with the jewelry. I know I don't know why that was moving, but those things were moving, but they were. But that was an an interior cell. And the whole thing with adding a couple of scripts to an item and putting a collision barrier around them, that works with interior cells. But when you do that in the outside world, it doesn't work. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. There's two ways I can do this. Um, one way, because my test character is a Nord, and Nord has, uh, let's see, where is it? Battle Cry. This battle cry targets flee for 30 seconds. It has a similar to effect to uh, Fushiro Da, and stuff will go flying. Now I can fire that off, and you'll see that all this shit's going to go flying. Or we can leave the cell, wait a couple hours, and then come back. And when we load into the cell, stuff's going to go flying either way. The point to all that is... I have to replace these bottles and these in individual ingredients with actual static objects. And the way to make a static object is I can take an item like, like this uh, large timber right here. I make a duplicate of it. I give it a unique ID and then I copy the NIF file, which I guess is kind of like the three-dimensional image file that... It, it makes the item look the way it does and essentially I'm going to take a copy of this and I'm going to make it look like like an ingredient like that honeycomb or I'm going to make it look like that potion bottle it's you're taking a static object and you're making it look different but it is actually a static object so I have to do that for all these bottles and all these ingredients now most likely I'm not going to do it for all these bottles it's just that's that's a lot uh, I might do it for like half of them though. So, and all the items that are here on the table, I have to replace these with actual statics. And a lot of the items on this shelf, not all of them, some of them are like the candles or statics, but everything that you can see, the, the take symbol come up, they are, they are uh, not statics. I have to make static versions of them. And because we are in an exterior cell, I can't guarantee they're going to stay in place like they did with the interior cell. Even these diamonds, these things never moved. But they're going to move here in a few seconds when I fire off Battle Cry. This place is going to be, I'm going to back up a little, it's going to be a mess. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Stuff still flying around. Man, it's just like one of those horror shows, you know, with the poltergeist and shit goes flying around the room. See how this mushroom looks like it's... Alright, you done yet? That's just so freaky. See how this mushroom looks like it's floating in air? It's, it's actually sitting on top of that collision box. And the collision box should... Should prevent that shout or any shout or any magic from hitting these ingredients but obviously it doesn't so we have to make statics for all this stuff even the uh the heart stones here we got to make statics of those here's those diamonds that were in the skeleton's eye sockets the skulls are static but not the diamonds so we have to make statics for those too it just means it's going to take me a little while to finish the basement when I have to make a static for every single item that can move down here. So anyway, with that out of the way, now that I made a mess of the place, let's go see what's been done to the interior. Stairs look familiar. There's our, there's our door. Open to Skyrim. Yeah, okay. So you can see I've been bringing, bringing over uh, bits of wall sections and slapping them in place. 
So everything looks pretty much the same. Uh, I replaced the dividing wall, the one I made with this one, because this is one piece and mine was like 23 pieces. And I could not, I could not get all that stuff in the exact right spot. And I had to go in and adjust every single one of those pieces a little bit. It was really irritating. Uh, so I just scrapped it and I brought this one in. I did add a timber on this end and the, and the stone on top and same thing over here. So it's five pieces all together. But uh, you can see through that piece if you don't put an end cap on it. So that's why that's there. But everything looks pretty much the same. Display case, pelt on the wall, the big bear, all the swords up there, the animal heads, the stuff on the mantle. Now there's nothing on here right now. Again, I have to make new statics. I can't use the old ones because they're tied to the old mod, so I have to make some new ones. But I did make new ones of these little jugs right here, which are, I don't know, is this a ceramic jug or ceramic urn? I don't remember, but I did make statics for those. And you can see there's stuff that's missing on the shelves. Again, I have to make new statics. But everything else is, you know, looks exactly the same now the doors are linked up well these two and the one downstairs so you can still hear, hear those bottles bouncing around but here we are on the back deck I mean, not that you haven't seen a low door before, but I just, uh, you know, I, 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 I got to prove it, man. So we got our little figurines up there. I brought in the light sources and I changed the, oh, what do you call it? The default lighting, the lighting template. So I, I set the lighting template to the same as what we had before. And I brought in the same light sources, copy and paste it again. Now, I may need to adjust those a little bit. I won't really know until I get a, the ceiling on here. I do know in part six, it was kind of dark in there. And I don't remember what lighting mod I was using at the time. So right now I'm using RLO, Realistic Lighting Overhaul. And it's kind of difficult. I, I probably should not be using a lighting mod when I'm setting the lighting in here, but because it's going to look different if you're using RLO, if you're using EL effects, if you're using EL effects with the enhancer, ELE, luminosity, relighting Skyrim. You know, people are going to be using different lighting mods, so the lighting may be better or worse. It's difficult to get the lighting just right for every light, every lighting mod. But anyway, this is uh, this is what we have so far. And like I said, I'm bringing over small groups of pieces at a time, maybe 20 or 30 at a time at the most, and uh, putting them in place. And sometimes I still need to adjust pieces. In most cases, I have to make some small adjustments to pieces. But uh, so far, everything's coming along pretty well. We'll get Meridia in here. We'll get the stairs in here and start work on a kitchen and dining room next. And uh, then we'll get the upstairs set. Then uh, there's still a lot of new statics I have to make. I, there is there is a shortcut that I can do for taking some of the statics from the other mod. And basically, uh, I make a duplicate of that. I give it a new name and save it. And that saves it to the new mod. So it's a quicker way of uh, making statics from the ones I've already made. So I don't have to make them from scratch again, but that's, yeah, whatever, right? Just, <laughs> you don't need all those details, probably, probably don't care either. Uh, but, I mean, everything's moving along pretty well here. So I'm, I'm really anxious to get the kitchen dining room done, to get the stairs in. That's going to be kind of tricky. I hope that goes well. There's a lot of pieces in the staircase. So hopefully I can get everything in just the right spot. Uh, but, you know, it's coming along pretty good. So we'll just keep bringing pieces over and then uh, 
I'll have to make, um, I have to make, probably have to make new custom containers and new custom activators. It's not really a big deal. And then uh, get everything linked up. And uh, so far, everything's looking pretty good. So anyway, I think that's where we're going to leave it for right now. Um, yeah, that's going to do it here. It's looking pretty good. Still got a lot of work to do, though. But uh, we'll keep at it and get everything migrated over here and get the new containers in, get everything linked up, and we'll be good to go. So, that's going to do it for now. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What time is it? It's almost 6 o'clock. Let's, uh, let's let it get a little darker in here. You can see the windows are changing color. They still have, these are the same windows, so they still have the emittance. So you can see the bear's not illuminated as much anymore and the windows are going darker. And now the other light sources are getting brighter. There we go. Why is that thing blinking like that? It shouldn't be doing that. That, that one light source is the biggest pain in the ass. I don't even have any downstairs light sources this time. I don't know why it keeps doing that. You see how that's... See around the chimney it lights up? Oh well, I'll look into that. It shouldn't be doing that. But maybe I have to move one of these other light sources a little bit. Maybe the one by the chandelier. I did move that one this direction a little bit. So maybe I'll push it back towards the corner. But it's kind of hard to tell if this is going to be enough lighting right now because, you know, we don't have the roof on here. But nah, so far, it looks okay. Anyway, again, that is where we'll leave it for now. Um, nah, I don't like the lighting. It's a nice glow. It's a nice, it makes the, uh, makes the logs look good. So, all right. That's it for now. Take it easy. Have a great day. I will see you in part eight.